When David Carter didn't show up for work earlier this week, his family sounded the alarm. This afternoon, Michigan State Police crime scene investigators were searching for clues near Outer Drive and Allen Road, and that is where Rod Maloney is right now. What are we hearing from police so far, Rod? Well, what we're hearing from police is they're trying to stay mum about a lot, Devin, but this is where it was, and they spent almost uh, 36 hours here. And it was the state police crime lab that was in here for most of the time. They had officers, a number of techs. They also had the Melvindale Police Department, a number of detectives from there. And they just took the crime scene tape down here just a few minutes ago. But the family is most concerned, and we were able to talk to David's sister. Her name is Tasia Carter Jackson, and this is what she had to tell us today. My worst fears is that my brother is is not living. That's 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 my worst fear. I'm praying that it's it's something different. Uh, I mean, we all are praying that it's something different. Still, it's difficult to put those fears away when Michigan State Police crime lab technicians spend more than 24 hours combing your apartment building at the Gale Gardens Apartments. David's 39 years old. He works for a tier one auto supplier in Highland Park, has a teenage son whom he adores, and his sister says it was very strange when he didn't show up for Sunday's work shift, paying triple time. We so close, his co-workers contacted me, you know, to find out what's going on with my brother. That's how close me and my brother are. Tasia tells us her brother is very exacting, kept a clean apartment, never missed work, and was very security conscious. So when she came to see if he was home Monday night, she found a terrifying sight. Yeah, his car was here. His car was here, <clears throat> the house was unlocked, and he would definitely never leave his house unlocked, uh -huh. ever. So while the police do their search, the family is looking high and low as well. We so close, his co-workers contacted me, you know, to find out what's going on with my brother. That's how close me and my brother are. So at this point, both the police department and the family are looking for any help they can get from anybody who knows him or has seen him to call police so that they will be able to uh, maybe move this case forward. Again, the family's largest fear is that he may have died, but so far police are saying they have not found him or his body, and so everybody is holding out hope. Back to you. Well, uh, Rod, who was the last person then to hear from David? Have they figured that out yeah. yet? Yeah, the, it, it looks like uh, his son, uh, who had come to the house here uh, looking to pick up a, a phone charger. Um, also, his girlfriend was here. Now, there was some texting going on back and forth, and somewhere in the middle of that, um, he may have even told his, uh, his uh, uh, girlfriend that he was not feeling well, but the police are still trying to sort out that, get a timeline for all of that. Yeah. Uh, but again, if you know anything, if you've seen anything, please give Melvindale Police a call. All right, Rob.